Good morning, Rainbow Push family. I want to thank Rainbow Push and Reverend Jackson for the invitation to speak this morning. I'm the 119th president of the National Medical Association, representing over 50, thank you. Representing the over 50,000 African American physicians here in the United States and also its territories. I'm here this morning to talk a bit about the, the incident at Mercy Hospital on Monday. I'm not just president of NMA, but I've been on the medical staff of Mercy Hospital for nearly 30 years. I'm not, thank you. And I'm not just a physician who's on staff there. I've received my own care there. My husband, who's on the front row, has had five surgeries there. My parents received their medical care there also, amongst other many relatives. And so my heart aches for the victims of what happened at Mercy on Monday, but also my heart aches for my colleagues on the medical staff there, the patients, the staff there also. It was heart-wrenching to see people that I know loaded onto buses to be evacuated from the hospital. The me chief medical officer and I have been friends for over 30 years, and to watch him to do that press, con Monday, press conference Monday night was just heartbreaking, the things that he had to say and to answer to. And so, you know, I didn't know Dr. O'Neill, but I wish I had. Like me, she was a devout Christian who loved her church, who loved her family, who loved taking care of her patients. It's unfortunate that she was a victim of domestic violence, but it's also unfortunate that domestic violence affects African-American women more than the general population. 40% of African-American women are affected by domestic violence, but only 31% of the total population, and that's physical violence. 47% of the population is affected by psychological violence, but for African-American women, that's over half. That's 53%. It leads to lost time in work, school, medical care, needing legal services, housing, et cetera. But we've got to deal with some sol solutions to this. And what are the solutions? One thing, we've got to ask states to promote the safety of survivors by barring abusers from gun possession, <laughs> which was the assailant's ex-wife who had a restraining order against him, and by recognizing stalking as a serious crime. That was the assailant's ex-girlfriend, who was being text stalked by him also. So we've got to recognize that. We've got to have adequate resources from the government to support survivors by continuing to support funding streams, providing essential services and support for domestic violence victims with housing, employment, and educational services. We've got to do a better, better job of collecting data about what happens to black women with experiences of intimate partner violence. This would help researchers, policymakers, and service providers develop more complete understanding of the challenges black women face in situations of violence and help pinpoint the greatest threats to black women's safety as well as the most effective interventions. We've also got to watch for the criminalization of black female victims. We remember the sister in Florida who got convicted and did time for shooting a warning shot by the way she was pregnant when she was trying to keep her abuser away from her and her children. And so that's what we call the criminalization of those who are the victims. That must stop. A lot of times women, thank you, women are seen as being aggressive, but they're just defending themselves. And so we've got to put programs in place that help people to be culturally competent and sensitive to the fact that when we're responding to those acts, we are doing what we can to save our lives. For women of color, we've got to make sure that everyone is sensitive, no matter what their class is, their rich, their poor, their sexual orientation, their gender identification, when they access, access services. So finally, I just want to say that we heard the NRA talk about physicians being self-important and telling us to stay in our lane. On Monday, Dr. O'Neill was in her lane, she was on her street, she was on her highway, and she still was a victim. So NRA, look out, this isn't over. NMA, we're, we're, looking, we're looking at you, we're coming for you, thank you.